In this lesson, we will cover workplace safety. Additional information on this topic can be found in Chapter 11 of the General Aviation Maintenance Technician's Handbook. A clean and orderly workplace is a first priority in maintaining a safe lab. Be conscious of trip hazards and eliminate them when you identify them. Know where the first aid boxes and eye wash stations are located. If either need attention, let your instructor know. Know where the fire extinguishers are located and how to use them. Bring any discrepancies with them to the attention of your instructor. Report any injuries, even minor ones, to your instructor. What appear to be minor injuries today may turn out to be larger injuries with time. Communicate unsafe conditions or actions to your instructor. We can't fix what we don't know. Develop a healthy respect for the power of electricity to cause harm. Understanding the basic principles of electricity will make you better able to avoid its hazards. Electrical cords can become trip hazards. Watch for them. Avoid stepping on or driving equipment over electric cords as this can damage the insulation exposing bare wires and can also break individual wire strands, increasing resistance and creating a possible fire hazard. Bring damaged electrical power cords to the attention of the instructor so that they can be repaired or replaced. Inspect pneumatic hoses for cracks or other damage. Do not use damaged hoses. Instead, inform your instructor so he can have them replaced. Air hoses like electric cords can be a trip hazard. Watch for them and like electric cords, avoid stepping on or driving equipment over them. Do not use compressed air to clean dust or debris off of your person or clothing. I have personal knowledge of a young man who lost a finger doing so. Air hoses should be put away and properly stored when not in use. When working with any hazardous material, which includes many fluids used in aviation maintenance, Make sure you read, understand, and follow the directions accompanying the material and wear the prescribed personal protective equipment, such as safety glasses, respirators, chemical resistant gloves, aprons, and face shields as appropriate. Locate and read the material safety data sheet for any product you are not familiar with. The risk diamond on a product's label identifies the level of health and fire hazard reactivity, and any special hazards. You should be familiar with how to interpret what it says. A brief explanation of the risk diamond can be seen here. OSHA approved safety glasses must be worn any time you are working in the area of power tools, chemicals, pneumatic, or welding equipment. Horseplay in the lab area or around the aircraft will not be tolerated. The potential for serious injury or damage to expensive equipment is high in these environments, and everyone must be focused and aware of what is going on around them to prevent injuries. Acting in other than a safe and responsible manner may result in your failing a lab and possibly the course. When working in the vicinity of an operating turbine engine, you must remain at least 25 feet from in front of a running jet engine, at least 100 feet behind an idling turbine engine, and at least 200 feet behind a turbine engine running at takeoff power. A propeller on a running aircraft can be nearly invisible, and there have been numerous incidents over the years of people inadvertently walking into them. The results are obviously disastrous. Never stand within the arc of a propeller and avoid being even close if possible. Never, never assume a propeller will not begin spinning just because no one is in the cockpit. Faulty wiring or ignition system or a bad magneto may cause the propeller to rotate even with the ignition turned off. Before starting an aircraft engine, ensure everyone is away from the aircraft. If possible, Cone off the area around the front of the aircraft to help warn those in the vicinity that an aircraft may be started at any time.
Make sure you follow these simple guidelines when working around helicopters.